the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in the Nation of Islam. Coming to you streaming live once again at www.ntouchnews.com radio. We're so very happy and so very honored and so very appreciative of all of the contributors to this event that allow us to be here today. And as those of you who tune in with some regularity, you know I always begin our show with expressions of gratitude. And nothing has changed in this segment. And so, in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, the one God to whom all praise is due, the Lord of the worlds, we thank Almighty God, Allah, for his merciful and prophetic intervention in our affairs. In the person of Master Fard Muhammad, the great Mahdi, and we thank him for raising up from our midst his messenger, Messiah, and because of the work and sacrifice, message, and uncompromising spirit and stance, of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, we now know him to be the exalted Christ, the one whom the world has been awaiting and expecting for the past 2,000 years, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, through whom we have been given our beloved and blessed Redeemer, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. It is to him and to them that we are deeply grateful and highly honored for this wonderful privilege once again to come to you streaming live with a message from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. We want to, as always, thank our dear brother and CEO of In Touch News Radio, our brother Daryl Johnson, for extending to us this opportunity, this platform, and this forum upon which and in which we can discuss with our listening audience the current events as they relate to prophecy, as they relate to scripture, and how they impact upon humanity, of course, at large, but particularly and specifically the black man and woman and people of color here in America and all over the world. I'm so very happy to greet all of you with the greeting words of peace. We say it in the Arabic language, Assalamu Alaikum. It simply means peace be unto you. I'm here with our brother Esteban that I wanted to introduce to everybody. He's the engineer that facilitates our message coming to you streaming live. And so he's, he's a little shy, <laughs> but I just wanted to publicly express our gratitude to our dear brother Esteban. Thank you, brother, so much for your great work and for assisting us in this show. Well, let's get after it as a, what is that? gentleman's name on CNN, Cuomo, says, let's get after it. We are all but nearly exhausted, emotionally exhausted, as a result of the current tragedies that have occurred here in America and throughout the world, but specifically here in America. The Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that the broader community, the community of Caucasians here in America, expect because of their brutal history and treatment of the black man and woman in America and, of course, people of color in America and around the world, they said or the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, they expect a revolt coming 
from black people and people of color. They expect rebellion. And they're not wrong because as things continue in progress along the trend and line that they are progressing or regressing, let me say, you cannot expect human beings to tolerate this kind of behavior on the part of the broader society that inflicts such a brutality on black people and people of color. Yes, there will be a revolt. However, this can be avoided by doing justice by and for the people of color here in America and in the world, but specifically the black man and woman who were kidnapped from their native land and people and forcibly brought here to America and subject to the worst treatment any human being has ever suffered in the annals of human history. What we, of course, would like to talk about in this uh, segment, in this show, is the cause and effect of a violent society. That, in fact, is the headlining title of the Final Call newspaper centerfold article and message of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. You know, you hear the confusion. You hear the befuddlement. You hear the questions being asked by everyone as to why these mass killings are taking place. They seem to be unexplainable. They're always trying to uncover motive, although we know the motive. But the people, the newscasters, and some are rank and file and lay people are asking the question, why this violence? Why this mass killing? Why this attack on Latinos, Hispanics, and black people, and people of color who are seeking a better way of life, a better lifestyle that has been offered to the world by the leadership of America. They even have a flag, uh, not a flag, but a statue. The Statue of, of Liberty. Declaring that the world should bring their tempest toss to the shores of America. The oppressed to the shores of America if they're seeking freedom. Well, we know the hypocrisy of that. Much has been said in way of explanation as to why the perpetrators of these heinous and brutal crimes do what they do. But for the most part, they're talking about effect. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, the most Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, what I'm giving you is root knowledge, not branch knowledge, but root knowledge. And so we want to talk about cause and causative factors and the effect of a violent society. And so I'm going to read the words of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan that can be found in the latest Final Call newspaper, the paper that speaks on behalf of people of color, on behalf of the oppressed, but specifically on behalf of truth, Freedom, Justice, and Equality. This article can be found on page 20 of the latest Final Call newspaper, volume number 38, number 45, dated August 13th, 2019. And while I'm on that, I want to show the paper. The lighting in the station, unfortunately, does not give a really good depiction of the cover but for those of you who have never read this paper, I am encouraging you. Get your final call newspaper. You won't find in this paper um, articles of advertisement, although we understand 
journalistic procedures and journalistic behavior and activity where advertising supports the uh, journalistic effort. We're not condemning that. However, this paper is purely, purely a paper to deliver and report the truth, uncompromised, straight, no chaser. And so we invite all of you to purchase the Final Call newspaper. It's only $2, and you see our brothers out on the streets every weekend going door to door or on the corners selling the paper. This paper's finance not only provides the reproduction of the paper every week, but the monies from this paper goes towards creating jobs for our people. It goes towards schools, as we have an independent school system called the Muhammad University of Islam. It goes towards black commerce. So support the newspaper. Thank you for that <laughs> uh, that brief advertisement. But now let's go to the message of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And for those of you who wish to join the discussion, you can call 813-444-9588. Once again, that's 813-444-9588. And you, of course, can view this program live, streaming live at www.n-touchnews.com and under that same address on Facebook Live. Call in and join the discussion. And now, the words of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. I am honored to be here this afternoon, and I greet all of you, my dear brothers and sisters, and especially those parents and grandparents who have lost their loved ones to gun violence. With the greeting words of peace, we say it in the Arabic language, Assalamu alaikum, which means peace be unto you. Before I continue, I want to uh, read exactly where this uh, message is coming from and its date. This is the editor's note. On December 17, 2008, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was invited by Reverend Dr. Michael Flager of the Faith Community of St. Sabina to deliver remarks at an emotional anti-violence rally at the Illinois State Building in downtown Chicago. The Chicago Police Department's superintendent at the time, Jody P. Weiss, was present as well as high school students and parents who have lost children to gun violence. These words are as appropriate and relevant now as they were when originally delivered and perhaps even more so given America's global bloodshedding and increasingly militarized police forces operating in cities from coast to coast. Order this full message on MP3 or CD or DVD at store.finalcall.com or call 1-866-602-1230, extension 200. Now let us continue. When Jesus walked this earth among us, he never came to his disciples and said, what's happening? Or, what up, dog? He said, Peace be with you. He didn't speak English. He spoke ancient Egyptian Arabic, Hebrew, and Aramaic. So when Jesus greeted the people, he said, Assalamu alaikum, because he, in that greeting, crystallized a prayer. 
that from his lips and from his hands and from his life, you should expect that which would bring peace into your lives. I want to read that again because that's the universal greetings of the Muslims wherever we are found. Assalam alaikum, because he, in that greeting, crystallized a prayer that from his lips and from his hands and from his life, you should expect that which would bring peace into your lives. And what we are telling you, brothers and sisters, and all of you who are recipients of the greetings when we see you, that you are free from harm from our hands. You are free from harm from our tongues. You are free from harm even of um, aggressive thoughts against you because we wish you peace. Now let us continue. The cause and effect of wicked policies. There is a saying that reads like this. Children do what is natural until they learn what is normal. I want to read that again. Children do what is natural until they learn what is normal. Any child that you see, whether it is black, white, Asian, Hispanic, or Native American, whether it is Muslim, Christian, Jewish, Hindu, or Buddhist, the child does what is natural, like learning to crawl, pull up on things that will help it, be, help it to become erect and to walk. We didn't teach it those things. But then the child learns to become normal. Normal means that you learn the norms, which are the folkways and the mores of the society or the culture in which you live. But then, if we keep watching, we go further and further away from the natural, but yet we are still considered normal. Now, I would ask of us to reflect on the words of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in that particular statement. People do what is natural until they are impacted upon by the society into which they were born and that will ultimately and ultimately that in which they grow. This gives understanding to the scriptures in the Bible. We were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. We were born not with sin, as some subscribe to, but born in sin and then shaped by the iniquitous nature of the sin. So the culture, the city, the town, the state, the world into which we were born is a steward of the new life. First and foremost, the child is born into the parent, the stewardship of the parents or the extended relatives or brothers and sisters. But whatever they learn from parental guidance or sibling influence that is ultimately impacted upon by the society. Society has, as the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan taught us, the responsibility of further stewarding the life that Allah God permits to come into birth. So Tampa, I'm speaking to you directly. You have a responsibility for every life that comes into existence in the Tampa Bay area. Yes, the parents are responsible. There's no question about that. And maybe the extended family, the uncles, the cousins, the siblings, as I before stated, they have their responsibility towards stewardship, stewardship of the child. But the city government, the neighborhood, let me start there. 
then the city government, then the state government, then the federal government has the continued responsibility to steward the new life in the proper lines and in the proper way that the child may be trained up properly. And this is what the scripture means when it states, train the child up in the way that he or she should go and they are not and they will not depart from that. Now you may say, well, my children don't listen to me. And the preachers may say, well, the children are not listening to us preach and they're not coming to church. Could it be that the parents, could it be that the preachers, the teachers, the counselors are not training the child up in the way the child should go, not according to man, but according to God. I want us to think about that. Let us continue the reading. Everybody is looking for somebody to straighten out a mess that was made, unfortunately, by those in authority. We cannot stem the violence that is here at the bottom, which is an effect unless we look at the violence that begins at the top, which is the cause. We are the effect of a cause that we did not stem the tide of, and now it's manifesting in the children. Every mother, every grandmother that lost a child, we who are here today feel your pain. Although we are trying to be good and righteous people, we go to church, we pay our tithes, we do what good parents and good people should do. Some of us lose faith in God when a misfortune comes into our house. While we can never bring back what we lost, we have to ask the question, why should this come into my life? There is a verse in the Holy Quran, which is the book of scripture of the Muslims, that says, No soul dies but by the permission of God. God gives life, and he is the ultimate cause of death. So why did he permit this? If these children had not died, would we be here? Jesus said, Suffer the little children to come unto me because he had some disciples who were disrespecting the value of children. We live in a society where we are not looking out for the elderly or the young. Many of us who are pastoring, we pay no attention to children because they don't tithe. So it is only when something affects children that it wakes us up to something terribly wrong. Dear mothers, your children did not die in vain because nothing advances in civilization without the sacrifice of life. Let us refer to the example of the life of Jesus. He had a mother that nurtured him. He came from among a people and a group that evidently were not so good because the scripture says, can any good come out of Nazareth? As it is with people today who think the same. Can any good come out of the south side or the west side? Can any good come out of Chicago, the murder capital of the world? Yes, of course good did come, but that good died young. Those in positions of power lied on Jesus because they didn't want to deal with his truth, so they brought him to court. The people hated Jesus, and the book says they hated him without a cause. He was rejected of men. He knew what it was to suffer, and he knew what it was to be scourged, and ultimately he died a violent death so that others might have a right to the tree of life. Beloved family, those dear mothers and fathers and grandmothers and grandfathers and friends and relatives are in great pain because someone they loved died in their youth. Grandmothers had to bring their children to their final resting place, 
But remember, your child, your friend, and your companion did not die in vain. Every life with God is sacred. Those children that lost their lives are martyrs for a cause of justice and peace. Now, I want to stop at this point and allow those words that I read from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan to take hold in our minds that we may try to get some understanding as to why a good God would permit the recent mass killings here in America of innocent men, women, and children. And what is breeding and brewing in the hearts and minds of those with that kind of murderous mentality that they feel that they should, if in fact they have a problem with immigrants or have a problem with people of color, that that problem needs to be solved by their elimination. We can jail and even kill the perpetrators. And yes, they are worthy of incarceration, and they are worthy of death. I make no bones about it. The scripture says, as I heard the governor of, of um, Texas say, or the mayor, rather, of El, El Paso say, he, he didn't have any manual to deal with what was happening. He said the only thing that he has, the only text that he has, the only guiding principles that he has is the Bible. Well, the Bible states in this case, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, and a life for a life. That's not Brother James. That's not the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. That's not the mayor of El Paso. That's the scriptures given by Musa or Moses. So when I say that they're worthy of incarceration, and yes, they're worthy of death, don't get upset with me. Get upset with Moses who brought the law. But over it all, there is an all-knowing, all-seeing God. And what we must ask ourselves is, and ask God, God, why do you permit such? We have to go to commercial while you think on that question. And for those of you who want to join the discussion, you can call 813-444-9588. We will be right back. Hi, this is Dr. Veronica Walters, also known as Dr. V, the head of school at the Walters Academy for Entrepreneurship, a place that we like to call The Way, where we're educating today's youthpreneurs to be tomorrow's billionaires through social entrepreneurship. Do you have a student who's bored, frustrated, gifted, inquisitive, creative, business-minded? Then maybe you need to check The Way out. Listen, we have an educational platform that allows for individualized instruction. It's strength-based, project-based, and designed to help your students become the absolute best they can while starting their own business and being an entrepreneur. If you're looking for something different and you need to find a more excellent way, then you need to visit us at The Way. That's The Way, www.thewaetampa.org. Or you can call us at 813-603-7923. We look forward to showing your student a more excellent way at The Way. 
This is Linda Archie with Tyre Temple United Methodist Church. Join us every first and third Saturday of the month at the Village Market East Tampa, 3206 North Sanchez Street. Free parking, free admission, fresh produce, live entertainment, vendor shopping, and delicious cooked food. Join us every first and third Saturday of the month beginning June 22nd. For vendor information, call me 1-888-991-2502. See our ad in In Touch News or Florida Sentinel. Please call me at 1-888-991-2502. The Village Market at East Tampa, 3206 North Sanchez Street. And dear family, we are back with Closing the Gap. You've been listening to Closing the Gap. This is a show purposed for just that, closing the gaps between falsehood and truth. In fact, eliminating falsehood altogether and bringing a message of truth, freedom, justice, and equality from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan that will unite humanity. Closing the Gap. For those of you who want to want to join the discussion, once again, you can call 813-444-9588. Now let's continue with the words and message of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. The subject is the cause and effect of a violent society. The culture of violence starts at the top. We say we want sensible gun laws, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan states, but we are demanding it from a government at the same time that our government has the highest military budget of any nation in the world, developing more and more weapons to kill more and more people. How can the violence stop on the bottom when the violence is perpetrated by policies at the top it is painful to see me it is painful to me rather to say these truths in the presence of the superintendent of police and in the presence of other government officials here today because the truths that i speak sometimes are uncomfortable but it is not done out of hate i speak these truths because i love and I want to see things better, not just better for my people or for my children, but better for all children. Are our children our assets or are they liabilities? Do we have problem children or do our children have a problem? And if our children have a problem, then they are not the cause, they are the effect. Every mother in here that has brought forth a child, that child came through you, but not from you. Since it is God who gives life, then he permits life to be formed in your womb. The Quran says that to God is the eventual return of all life. So we come in at some point, and at some point we have to leave here. If the eventual return is to God, because it is from him that we came, then every child is a gift from God, not only to the mother and father, but a gift to that family, a gift to that community, a gift to that nation, a gift to the world. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Why do we, as parents, lie to our children? Violence begins with lies, because you're vi violating the mind when you tell a lie. When Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free, what is it that you would be set free from? It is freedom from the things that are the reason why we are assembled today. In the Bible, Paul said, we war not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, 
and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. High places are where the problems begin. When you have a lust for something like Air Jordan shoes or designer clothes and mother can't get it for you, why would you steal from your brother or your neighbor because of an inordinate value placed on something that has no real value? The real value is you and your life, your friendship and brotherly love. The real value is the ability to live together in peace. Well, it's clear that the real value of life obviously is not respected by the governments of America and the governments of the world. That is state, local, and federal governments here. The example that is given to the populace both on the local level and the state level and the federal level is an example that there are two forms of justice. One for the rich and another for the poor. And it transcends color lines. It transcends racial and ethnic lines. It's about class. It's about money. It's about wealth and power, then justice has two ways to be administered. There's always a concern about black, and there's always a concern about the people of color. What we have to understand, so teaches the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, that the wise rulers of this city, this state, this government, look at the population trends and the demographics and how they are trending in terms of how populations are growing and populations are decreasing. And they see the population of the people of color that's black, that's Hispanic, that's Native American. When they see our numbers increasing and their numbers decreasing, then they think about how we can literally populate ourselves into political power, into economic power, into social and cultural power. But the real fear among many of them is that when they think that when the people of color whom they have oppressed, whom they have discriminated against, whom they have brutalized ever since America has been an entity, a country, they are afraid that if we, the people of color, we, the black man and woman, we, the Native American, we, the Latino, the La, La Raza, the Hispanic brothers and sisters, when power comes to us, will we do to them what they took joy and made profit from doing to us? That's a real fear among many whites. Well, Let's continue. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan states, but in those high places, there is a lust for oil. Our government and our country is a slave to the energy crisis produced by an inordinate need for oil. The government is just like the drug addict. It will lie, it will cheat, it will steal to get their hands on a drug. Any parent in here that has a child that has unfortunately fallen victim to drugs, you know they are artful liars and manipulators. The addict will manipulate their parents and friends who love them just to get their hands on something that will allow them to get something that will make them high. In those high places, there are bad policies developed that are so wicked and so deceptive that our government can extract the wealth so that, rather, our government can extract the wealth of others. 
You can't stop drugs in the inner cities or in the suburbs if you don't understand that the government of the United States is in Afghanistan where all the poppies grow. These drugs weren't so easily accessible when the Taliban had power, but because the drug growth was down then. Once the Taliban lost power, now the drugs are flowing, heroin everywhere, and someone is getting rich at the top while our children are going to jail for what they have in their possession. And I just recently read an article, I think it was on Facebook, that stated that a ship belonging to J.P. Morgan uh, Corporation was found with 11 or seized with 11.5 billion dollar street value in cocaine. This is J.P. Morgan, the owner of Chase Bank and other financial entities. 11.5 billion dollars street value in cocaine. I want you to think about this, brothers and sisters. Let's continue to read. Our real wealth is in our children. In the scriptures of Matthew and Luke, it reads, For where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. As parents and those in positions of authority, our treasure is not where it should be. Our priorities are not where they should be. And in the Holy Quran, you always have the following words shown simultaneously your wealth, and your children. Because our children represent our real wealth. But where should our hearts be? Should our hearts be on the latest Gucci or alligator style? The latest designer, this or that? Latest bling bling, that? Where should our hearts be? It should be where our treasure is. And our treasure is our children. I have been practically all over the world, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan continues. However, everywhere I go in in Chicago, I find that it is one of the most beautiful cities in the world. We who live here are blessed to live in this great city, but it's a great city that needs a lot of great work to be done. Billions of dollars are spent on constructing huge building projects, but when you look at the education budget, we are not constructing these beautiful young lives as they should be. The greatest asset of America is her people, and if our treasure is in our people, then the billions of dollars that the government is throwing away to bail out corporations like AIG, Bear Stearns, and Freddie Mac, and Fannie Mae. Why not pull those billions of dollars to work or making giants out of these precious gifts, our youth, that God has given to America? President-elect Barack Obama at that time was a child just like these children who are here. He struggled in his young life, conflicted because he had a white mother and a black father, and wanted to find his place. However, that young man got a grip on his life just like we want you, you to get a grip on yours. Mr. Obama received an education and then rose to the top of his class, and in a meteoric rise, has become the first African-American to become president of the United States of America. Who are our youth now? Who will they be tomorrow if we cultivate them properly? Our youth are like putty, but putty is only valuable in the hands of the one that is going to shape it properly. As we are being shaped by our homes, our churches, and our society, then all of these shapers have to shape up. The misconstrued power in weapons. 
Do we need guns? Where did they come from? Who gets these violent weapons into the hands of our children? Why aren't those responsible being prosecuted instead of our children? In this world, power is what moves people. And because many of us don't realize that the real power is in our youth, a gun is put into a child's hand where they are told this is power. This misconstrued concept of power in a weapon is what causes you to get a man to give up his wallet or cause somebody to give up their own self to you if you are going to rape them. That is the misuse of weapons. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad is our teacher. He taught us that none of us as Muslims should carry a weapon. We don't need them. We are not permitted to carry as much as a penknife because our aim is to show the world that we are a people of peace. We are not even permitted to argue with one another because when you quarrel with one another, you destroy the spirit that would bring you unity, which would give you power to eradicate the impediments in the pathway of your progress. But if you are always arguing and fighting, particularly in our homes where most of the problems take place, then it's, I reach for my gun to settle my problem, or I shoot my wife, or she shoots her husband. Now the child sees guns every time they look at the TV. This is violence that is being promoted. So violence is now down in the kindergarten. If we have a problem, then we must practice talking it out because we must not harm our brother. Let's be truthful in our dealings with each other. Let's learn how to love, which starts with loving our own self. If you don't know you, you can't love you. But black children have to know themselves in order to love themselves. If our children knew their rich history, their rich culture, their rich heritage, we would have a healthier view of who we are and whose we are. When we see our brother, though he may be a crip or blood, or he may be a BG or BD, we must see that I, that I am looking at my flesh. I am looking at my blood. I am looking at myself. So if I love myself and love my neighbor as myself, we can start building community. I want to work with Father Flager, and I want to work with police super, with the police superintendent and others to let us try and make this city a peaceful city. Thank you. Those are the words of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan from a message titled, The Cause and Effect of a violent society. Now, as we are approaching the close of our show, I want us to consider these realities that have been sustained and confirmed and proven over centuries. Our program, the Muslim program, what the Muslims want, that is the program that we now must consider. Whenever people question us about that program, the first thing they go to is the fourth stated want of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam. But why don't they deal with points number one, two, and three? Points number one, two, and three begin as follows. We want freedom. We want a full and complete freedom. Number two, we want justice, equal justice under the law. We want justice applied equally to all, regardless of creed or class or color. Number three, we want equality of opportunity. We want equal membership in society with the best in civilized society. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has stated and continues to state, if we could realize 
the fulfillment of these natural and essential wants under the current political, economic, social, and cultural framework of and judicial framework of America, then there would be no need for point number four. But history has declared loudly. History has confirmed loudly that we cannot. And so this goes out to all of our brothers and sisters and to all of our people of color, wherever you are found in America, to all of our black brothers and sisters, to all of our Latino brothers and sisters, to all of our Native American brothers and sisters, to all of our community of whites even who are fair-minded and just, Minded. Number four, we want our people in America whose parents or grandparents were descendants from slaves to be allowed to establish a separate state or territory of their own, either on this continent or elsewhere. We believe that our former slave masters are obligated to provide such land and that the area must be fertile and minerally rich. We believe that our former slave masters are obligated to maintain and supply our needs in this separate ter territory for the next 20 to 25 years until we are able to produce and supply our own needs. Now, why do we believe such? The Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad continues, since we cannot get along with them in peace and equality, them meaning white people, and after, after giving them 400 years of our sweat and blood and receiving in return some of the worst treatment human beings have ever experienced, we believe our contributions to this land and the suffering forced upon us by white America justifies our demand for complete separation in a state or territory of our own. This is what reparations looks like. Our fathers have shed their blood on every foreign battlefield, supposedly to fight for the freedom of democracy, a democracy and a freedom and a justice and an equality that when our uh, fathers and mothers returned home from battle, they couldn't experience or enjoy themselves. So America has forced us to point number four. Consider it. Consider it. Separation does not necessarily mean that we are enemies. Separation means that we would fare better on our own. Now, I want us to look at the narratives in the news and how they are shaping the narrative of these recent mass killings. And here in the land of the free, the home of the brave, statistically, there is a mass shooting every day, statistically, here in America. Well, I want us to consider how they're trying to shape the narrative. President Trump is saying that we have to keep guns from the insane. Now, I want you to think about his words. His words are in line almost verbatim and in some cases verbatim with the words of white supremacists and white nationalists. Yet he says we have to keep the guns out of mentally deranged people. Well, Mr. Trump, if your words line up with white supremacists and white nationalists and you condemn them, at least in your last speech after this killing in El Paso, then who are the deranged? 
who are the mentally deranged if your words line up with theirs. And if they are mentally deranged and your words line up with their words, then maybe you are mentally deranged. I want us to think about that before we go to the polls in 2020. Thank you for listening. Brothers and sisters, that's the end of our show. And if I can, I want to ask all of you who are listening, if you enjoy the show or just want to support, you can go to PayPal at jkingdom1 at aol.com to show your support. Or you can go again in PayPal to region7helper.jm at gmail.com to make your contribution. And for those of you who are users of Cash App, you can go to JM7 Region. That's JM7 Region. Thank you for listening. And may Allah God bless us with the light of understanding as I greet all of you in peace, the Arabic language. Assalamu alaikum.